Okay, one more example and then some comments. Let's look at the function f of x equals 2x. Again, a function that's pretty simple to graph. And let's go through the points 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We'll go through those x values. And the graph obviously has y values 2, 4, 6, and 8. So 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, and 6, 8. That's a graph of function f. And it's a function of x. Now we want to think about the area under this graph as we take a vertical line here and drag it to the right and how much area is enclosed behind that line. So we're going to make another graph down here and go through these same x values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to think about the enclosed area. Well, if we start at 0, the enclosed area down there is 0. So we have 0, 0 on our graph. By the time we get to x equals 1, like we see here, this much area is enclosed, that little triangle. The area is one-half base times height, so one-half of one times two. And let me just make note of these values. Area at one is one-half of one times two, that's just one. And at two, we have this area enclosed, one-half of two times four, which is four. So A of two will be four, the area enclosed under the axis at 2 is a total of 4. Let's go on to 3. Now the total accumulated area now is given by this triangle here and that's going to be 1 half of 3 times 6. So that's 9. A of 3 is 9 and then it, by the time we get to 4 we've enclosed all of this area which would be 1 half of 4 times 8, and that would be 16. So a of 4 is 16. So let's plot these values. We need to go up to 16. So that'll be 8 there, and 4 and 12. Just marking off our, our vertical axis there. So a of 1 is 1. That'll be way down here. a of 2 is 4, about right there. a of 3 is 9, and a of 4 is 16. And even without seeing the graph, you've probably recognized this function here, a of x, is the function x squared. Now one thing that you've hopefully seen in all of these examples is that in every case, the area function is the antiderivative of the original function. And you can see here that x squared is the antiderivative of 2x. And let's just look through the earlier examples real quick. So your f of x is equal to 1 right there, and the antiderivative of that is x. And in the second example we did, the function was 2, and the antiderivative was 2x. And in the third example that we did, the function was 50, and you see the antiderivative of that is 50x. And when f of x was x, the antiderivative here, x squared over 2. And when f of x was 2x, here we have the antiderivative, x squared. In every case, the area function, the area under our curve f, is given by another function that is always the antiderivative of the given function. And that fact is key. The fundamental theorem of calculus depends on that fact. It says that the area underneath the graph is given by another function that is the antiderivative. And here we see several examples showing that that is in fact the case. And it's not just true in these examples, it's true every single time.